the process started out just wanting to, you know, move into the country and wanting to build an uh, ecological home, you know, energy efficient using natural materials, a little bit of a homesteading project, trying to uh, grow a certain amount of our own food, you know, and heat our home with the trees from the property and managing the forest in a sustainable way, being stewards of the property. My wife Christine and I and my son Mola, we all live here and living here, just being in nature is just, you know, such a treat and even to a point that it's hard to leave. And I think also the satisfaction of, you know, harvesting something and then using it and creating with it is really enjoyable. But to sort of live off the land, so to speak, you know, is work, but it is a labor of love and it has you involved in the cycle of life. It's hard work. I think it's uh, one of the things that keeps me feeling healthy. So, you know, after 18 years since we started this project, it doesn't feel like a burden at all. It feels normal. The materials for the home, we wanted, uh, you know, this to be a healthy home. So to have good indoor air quality um, with no off-gassing. So we've used a lot of you know, natural wood, finished with natural oils. We've used natural paints. All the walls are finished with silicate-based paints. So they're uh, no VOC paint. We have some clay finishes on some of the walls. The earthen floors was one of the elements that we wanted to test out. So we did some little bits of that as well as a um, light clay straw wall system and you know stone all these kinds of things so just minimizing the amount of plywoods and particle boards and all those kinds of things yeah and then you know the straw bale walls are again another complement to that natural materials you know with straw obviously a completely renewable resource and we live in the country, you know, the straw that we used for the house was produced by the farmer up the road. And uh, yeah, it was, it was a good match. The straw bale wall system is essentially a straw bale, a full um, width straw bale that makes the wall from inside out. And it's got an inch of plaster on each side of it. So this house, the straw bales were integrated as an architectural feature and functioned as, a, as an insulated wall system. The designer, Martin Liefeber, did a, uh, you know, a beautiful design for the home. And we really liked the idea of having this atrium in the center of the home as kind of like this nucleus that would draw heat from the sun in the, in the shoulder seasons and the cooler seasons and be available to heat and warm other parts of the home. Um, and then have these bedrooms as these sleeping pods idea. And, and the rest of the home is like the, the living pod. And yeah, it worked out really great. The post and beam structure for the house is made out of uh, PSL, which is parallel stranded lumber. And that's an engineered lumber. And from an environmental perspective, the idea that you can take a whole pile of small trees to create these large pieces of timber, as opposed to cutting down old growth forest or super large trees to get the same size of a, of a product. As well, they're two to three times the strength for their size. That also helped in allowing the living roof for the weight. I think the, the biggest draw to the living roof was just that it was kind of felt like it was the house was like coming out of the ground, like it just sort of belonged. Keeps the house cool in the summer and you know helps maintain uh, the heat through the winter. We planted all the stuff on the roof, which most of that's still there, and things that have come are welcome. So things like milkweed and just other plants that have found their way up there, some goldenrod and whatnot, that's fine. And yeah, we've never watered it. So this is a, a you know, not an intensive living roof. It's more like an alpine garden. Everything's built to try to increase our thermal performance. So in general, you know, the insulative value for the straw bale wall system, we're looking around R40. We had learned 
when we were building this house, that thermal mass is an important factor. That's actually now been disproven to be the best way to make a highly efficient home. However, it does have some value. You know, to have a big window, have lots of thermal mass to take in that heat and slowly release that heat after the sun has gone down for the night. Because we're heating the home and the shop with the firewood, uh, every winter we will cut firewood. We select the trees that are either crowded and or sick and dying. We use those and any trees that end up being in good, uh, good saw logs, then we'll put them on the mill and I'll, we'll mill them into boards. And like in the house, all the doors, the flooring, uh, all the trim, the cabinets that we built in the kitchen and in the bathroom is all made from that wood. Basically, this is a, a gasification wood boiler. And in the top here is where you put all the wood. And then it's got like a fan and it blows air down through and creates a, uh, like a high le level of oxygen burn for underneath. And then that hot air goes through and out four tubes in the back of the boiler, which are surrounded by hot water. So bringing that heat into the hot water and then it goes into this big tank over here on the side. So this is a thousand gallon storage tank in here that uh, it's basically like a big water battery. So the, the wood heat is transferred into the water and then that water is pumped either through the house or in through the shop floor. So we've got the solar thermal panels and those heat the hot water for the house, which is just the domestic hot water. So that's just for showering and dishes and what have you. Um, all the other hot water to heat the house is from the boiler. So through the summer, that'll be eight, 90% of the hot water we need. And in the winter, it's just the um, preheat for the water because the sun's not out as much through the winter. We have a dug well, which has um, a limited amount of capacity. So minimizing our use on that is, uh, is important. So, uh, you know, with the composting toilet, we're able to, you know, prevent that extra water that's needed to flush waste down the toilet. And then just uh, with the gray water, being able to take all those nutrients and feed the plants. So whereas a regular septic system, the whole idea is, you know, is to try to get rid of it, make it go away, but everything that happens here can be here and it can stay here. So our septic system is a composting toilet and the gray water system working together. And we don't have a septic tank and so we use natural soaps and you know we don't use bleach. All of our water from our showers and dishwater, bathtub, laundry um, goes into a holding tank in the basement and then it's pumped into uh, irrigation chambers uh, and planter beds. So this is one of the planter beds here. This will treat half of our gray water and the other half will be treated outside. And we do that through the warmer months. Um, and then in the winter, all of it goes outside just because the indoor air moisture was, um, uh, you know, was getting a little bit too high. The composting toilet that we have in the house is a Clivus Maltrum. And so it's a vault style toilet. And this is the vault right here. And the toilet's right above. The toilet's nothing really unusual. Um, it's just this big chute down from the toilet. I'll tell you the really great thing about this toilet, and that is that it's always got a fan sucking air from the toilet down. So there's never any odor in the bathroom. So that's a real bonus. So the urine and the poop comes down, goes in here, we mix it with wood shavings. So every roll of toilet paper, we put about a coffee tin size container of wood shavings in. This is the working end of the vault and this is the rake out spot here. So once a, once a month, the cone, as they call it, gets raked out and that's it that happens there. This is the removal hatch down here. So the composted material is removed from that. And then there's the, uh, the liquid that can get pumped out here into a, another tank that can then be um, used outside for fertilization. It takes a year or two for the material to go through the whole process and for it to be composted. So 
Uh, once a year, I'll remove about half of what's in there, and that'll go, you know, a couple wheelbarrows full, and then that goes out, and uh, I'll spread that around some of the ornamental trees and so for non-edible plants. There's zero water for flushing, um, though there is a, a mist that goes into uh, over it to keep it wet and to keep everything happening. So once a day, it puts about a liter or two of water over it as a mist, but that's just once a day. Yeah, very little water. So when we started the project, we had a certain amount of money saved and we went to, you know, starting to build and work and doing it, a lot of it myself. You know, I didn't have to pay for that labor. And what our idea was, was to not borrow the money from the bank, but to get as far as we could. And then as we continued to generate income over the years to then complete the parts of the house that we could. So, you know, that made the project take longer, but it was just another way of doing it where, you know, we didn't have to depend on the bank and it just sort of gave us a little more time as well to, you know, try different things. Yeah, so when we bought the property, um, there had been a trailer here. So that was great because we had, the hydro was already here and there was a well and a phone line. But aside from that, it was just basically, you know, wild with some grasses and what have you. So it was a great spot to establish a house and set up the gardens and stuff. It was great because we had this southern clearing in the, so we could get all the light and stuff from this little, nice little sheltered nook. When we bought the property, we imagined growing a lot of our food. We have apple trees, we have grapes, Concord grapes, raspberries, there's hazelnuts. You know, in the garden, we got our garlic and corn and uh, squash, potatoes, onions, lettuce, beans. So, you know, um, and then we'll freeze and um, can. Christine's really big on canning, so get that taken care of. And then we've got the chickens. Um, which is great because we get all free-range eggs as we call them and, um, and with the greenhouse it just uh, adds a little length to the growing season so we can get you know some vegetables a little earlier. Yeah, so cucumbers and tomatoes and peppers all in the greenhouse. Our greenhouse is uh, irrigated with uh, rainwater from the roof of the shop and uh, yeah, we just collect it in these, uh, in these tubs and I mean rainwater is great for plants in the first place and and then just you know reduce the amount of water we have to pull out of the well. Challenges you know can come and I'm always trying to calculate risks and make sure that you know we're not going to get ourselves into a position where it's not going to be good a good outcome. So yeah I think just planning that's what uh, you know <laughs> avoids the challenges as much as possible. When we went to build this home, uh, we didn't know that much about straw bale construction. And um, at that point in time, Ben Pauly and Harvest Homes was one of the companies that could do a straw bale wall system. We got on really well. So after that all happened, I went to uh, work with Ben and uh, ended up as a part owner of Evolve Builders Group, which is the uh, general contracting company that we built together. We're doing straw bale homes, rammed earth homes, passive homes, sometimes some timber frame homes. So, you know, maybe building the kind of home we have isn't for everyone. I mean, there's lots of things that people can still do. And I, I think passive home is probably a good spot for people to jump in. And you can do that without having a rural property. You can build a passive house anywhere. Passive house is a building system to be able to get the house to perform at a level that the furnace can go away and you can heat with a very small heat source. I don't know the exact numbers, but you're reducing the amount of energy required by around 70%. And there's no guesswork. So that's done in a very calculated way. You know, to me now, looking at, you know, what we've done, I think that's a good way for this industry to be moving and I think it's an, an easy jump in point for anybody who's 
interested in building a home that is going to be better on the earth and reduce greenhouse gas emissions and you know contribute to fighting climate change. Subscribe to Exploring Alternatives and check out our playlists for many more videos like this. You can also find out more about Evolve Builders Group and their green building projects on their website. Thanks for watching.